Thanks for listening to the Lunch and Learn with Dr. Barry, here to help educate, motivate, and put you on the right path to take control of your health through weekly discussions on topics in the medical field, public health arena, and in your community. And now your host, Dr. Barry. Hey, welcome everyone. This is Dr. Barry, your host of the Lunch and Learn with Dr. Barry, yours truly. And this is episode 4840. Like always, like we always like to start this thing off. If you want my show notes, please head over to drpierresblog.com forward slash LLP 040. Again, if you want today's show notes of the Lunch Learn pod, it's going to be drpierresblog.com forward slash LLP 040. And we have a great episode for you. Uh, was we had a change of plans, and I actually brought a guest on the episode. Uh, depending on when you're listening to this, this is episode is actually being recorded on World Mental Health Day. So I thought, you know, I have to bring, you know, the expert uh, Maria Davis back onto the show again. She was in episode 33 and talk about World Mental Health Day and why it's important to you, why it's important to everyone, why we really should take it as serious as we need to take it. Just like when we talk about any of our other, you know, medical issues, breast cancer, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, we should also be talking about our mental health as well. So get ready, sit back and get ready for another great episode uh, with Dr. Barry and special guest Maria Davis-Pierre. All right, welcome everyone. Dr. Barry here. We have a return guest on the podcast. You remember her from episode 33. Uh, This is Maria Davis-Pierre. She is a licensed mental health counselor. And today I thought I had an idea of what I wanted to talk about on the podcast today, but I said, you know what? As I'm recording it, today is World Mental Health Day. And you're know, like, who else, you know, to get on the podcast to kind of talk about mental health than the licensed mental health counselor herself? Maria, again, thank you for joining the podcast. Thank you for having me. Hi, everybody. All right. And again, um, if you did not catch a previous episode, it is episode 33, uh, drpiersblog.com forward slash LLP. 033. Again, if you want to catch her past episode on death and dying and grief and how to deal with that, it was at drpiersblog.com forward slash LLP 033. Now, Maria, again, I think uh, the listeners who've been, you know, kind of rocking with me since the beginning know I've been such a big uh, proponent of mental health and, you know, recognizing, you know, when to get help in our regards. But As we have World Mental Health Day, as a licensed mental health counselor, what does that mean to you? Uh, For me, World Mental Health Day is about bringing awareness to uh, mental health disorders, illnesses. Um, it's uh, It's about the stigma, fighting the stigma, beating the stigma associated with uh, the tabooness of mental health uh, illnesses and disorders. So when you I mean, when you talk about like stigma, well, like what what you know I'm you know I I kind of know because again I've you know been very fortunate enough to you know kind of you know listen you know I do listen so I've been listening to the teachings of uh, Miss Maria Davis Pierre who if you have not caught is actually my wife. Um, so I've been listening a lot for some of the stigma, but for those who may not be you know, uh, uh, aware of as much as I am. Tell us, what are some of the stigmas going on with mental health and why a, a day, like really having like a whole day to really kind of celebrate and point out like, hey, you know, we really need to be talking about mental health. Tell, tell me why that's so important. Like, what are some of the stigmas uh, that you, especially as a licensed mental health counselor, have to deal with? Of course, there are some of my top that I see, um, top stigmas I see, some of the top stigmas that I see in my practice, of course, are um, embarrassment associated with getting a diagnosis, um, isolation due to cultural issues, of course. Um, what else? Uh, fear. They don't know what, what this means now for them. Um, so those are some of the, the common uh, stigmas. And we just really want to let people know that they're not alone. And that's why there is World Mental Health uh, Awareness Day. Um, so people know that they're not alone, that there are 
professionals out there for you to go talk to um, and just not to have any shame associated with having a diagnosis. Now, you know, it's a very good point. I can I can tell you, especially in my my practice when, when I was doing outpatient medicine, it was something that I could tell you from a gender perspective, the the men had a really big problem, right? Like really kind of owning up to their feelings and their emotions. Now I felt that the the women, the women were it's not as if they were, you know, more freer to tell me, uh, but they, you could tell that the stigma really wasn't there. Like they were, they, it was okay for them to say that they were sad. It was okay for them to say that they were weak and, and tired and depressed. And I feel, especially as a medical professional, that a lot of times, you know, I tend to kind of be on that front lines where, yes, they may be coming in for routine checkup, routine physical. But, you know, when, when you ask good questions, especially, you know, during your just everyday exam, when you ask good questions, you start like seeing a very common pattern associated, you know, with like that, like that mental health. Mm-hmm. And, and I can tell you just from uh, the, the men uh, that I've seen in my office and ver- the ones who like admit that they have a mental health issue versus the ones that they don't. Right. It was almost like v- stark differences, like mm-hmm. like my, my guys who would admit that they had, you know, mental health problems. Um, they were more recluse. They were more sad. They were more, uh, you know, uh, they kept to themselves. They really, even though they admitted to me in my office, you could tell, like, once they stepped out the office, they didn't really try to portray that. Yes. Versus the the guys who, like, all of the signs and symptoms were pointing to, like, you know what, I think something just isn't right. And it was like denial. Like, it was like this sense of denial. Like, nope, I, even though, all the signs are pointing to it. Like, oh, I meet all of the check marks. Like, nope, don't put that disease on me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and a lot of that has to do with um, the culture that they were raised in and their ideas of masculinity. Um, am I a man if I cry? Am I a man if I'm sad? No, they're told to suck it up, work it through. You're a man, you know man up you know that's that's a lot of what we hear and we of course want to not tell our young boys to man up because then stuff like that happens to where you know they push those feelings down they don't deal with them and they have you know get into depression and things like that so we of course want to uh, fight that stigma of the manning up as well and and I, I definitely love this segue. Um, what I will do in my show notes, I'm actually going to post a link to the video uh, that I kind of talked about, like manning up, right? It was something that kind of came to me. And again, it was really based off one of the patients I was seeing. And, you know, I could tell he was like telling his son, like, hey, man up, like, don't cry, like, boys don't cry. And like, it just kind of energized me. So I actually like recorded a video. And what I will do um, I'll put it in the show notes. So I'll put a show notes. I'll put it in the show notes, a direct link to that video. So you can kind of, you know, hear my tirade on, you know, why we got to stop, you know, especially as men, like why men, we have to stop telling other men and younger men uh, to man up. Right. I thought it was, and it's really a, to me. And again, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's like a, almost like a two edged sword, especially when we're thinking about mental health. Right. Mm-hmm. If we're telling our kids, we're telling the boys, man up, man up, man up. Mm-hmm. We're reflexively telling the girls, right, to like, you know, come, quote unquote, stay down, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, you can't act strong. You can't act, you know, uh, independent. Like, you can't do this, right? So it was almost like a twofold part. Um, mm-hmm. And me being, I have, uh, hi, we uh, have, you know, two girls and a boy. Like, I'm, I'm very cognizant of, you know, telling my, my son, you know, one way and then, yes. you know, not allowing my daughters to kind of act that same way because okay. I, I think that's like a cycle. Um, that mm-hmm. we, especially in our society, need to break. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's important for our young men and our, our young boys to know that it's okay to express their feelings. It's okay to talk about it because, you know, everybody has feelings. Not Their feelings aren't just exclusively for girls. So we want our boys to know that it's okay to show those feelings. It's okay to cry. It's okay to uh, be sad and down. Okay, so I agree with you on that. 
And I, I think what, especially, and again, I'm just now uh, when I, when I just, I'm trying to keep it with my, my adults, uh, especially because I, when I, when we hear about, you know, World Mental Health Day, me being an internist, and of course, most of the patients I deal with are going to be like adults, you know, usually 18. I think the youngest patient I was, I was taking care of was like 16, but I was just taking care of his parents. So it was kind of like, you know, a, a segue to taking care of them. Um, and just from like almost 16 up until like the seventies and eighties, uh, I felt that like that, that stigma kind of continued, right? Like mm-hmm. there was that stigma, even with the quote unquote diagnosis of whatever you wanted to put from a mental health standpoint, mm-hmm. there was a stigma, even with the medication, even getting prescribed medication. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the, one of the best examples is like, there's a medication, you know, we won't name it, uh, because you know, they're not cutting us a check, but <laughs> you know, they it's it's used for nerve pain, but because I have a lot of patients who are pretty educated or um, because they, you know, they follow the blog and I'm always telling them, you know, be educated on what you take. You know, it, it they saw that it was also used for depression and almost like 75 percent of the time when I would prescribe that to my male patients, they come back and say, hey, doc, you tried to give me something for a depression. Like <laughs> so even when I told them, hey, this is for your legs, this is for the burning in your legs. Because they they saw that it was also used for depression, they almost didn't want to take it. Like, I think the stigma, like, is that strong, right? And again, yeah. we're not saying that, you know, the women uh, don't have a, a stigma on their own. I'm not saying that, again, because I, mm-hmm. I, I saw that, you know, in, in my office as well. No, you probably did as well. Um, I'm just saying that, like, my men, like, they used to take it, you know, OD. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they 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 took it down to they took it up to like level 10 uh, when we were talking about like oh my god no no way i'm anxious no way i'm depressed you know, like no way i'm stressed no way i'm sad uh and i actually you know on on my instagram page i put a a quote uh by me uh where i talked about like until we get to the point where it's just as common and you, you realize it's just as normal to feel depressed and anxious and, and, and felt with grief as it is to feel happy and joy. Uh, we won't be able to move forward, especially in, uh, on a day like this. But again, we yes, this is World Mental Health Day, but, you know, and I, I'm pretty sure you'll be the first to say that, you know, we, sh- we need to be thinking about mental health all the time. All the time. Mental health and physical health go hand in hand. So, you know, like you were saying, you know, there are, there is an average normal amount of sadness, grief that everyone experiences because everyone has those feelings. It's when it gets into the, uh, I'm feeling sad all day, every day, uh, periods of time that we want to then address it as something a little bit more. But yes, of course, we need to be thinking of mental health every day and what do we need to do to take time out for ourselves to make sure our mental health is just as good as our physical health. Because a lot of times people are coming to you and they're sick and they're not understanding that a lot of it has to do with their mental health as well. If we get the mental health um, together, then a lot of times the physical health can fall into place. If I'm depressed and I don't and I don't want to get out of bed, how am I going to go out and exercise and do all these things to get my physical health together? So, you know, a lot of times that's what um, you and I do with our collaborative health is look at both sides of the spectrum. No, most, most definitely agree with that. And uh, I can tell you, and the reason why I always think, especially uh, the medical professionals, especially those in, you know, the outpatient primary care services, like we sometimes tend to be on the front lines, is that the, the patients that I did have who tend to have meta, uh, your mental health issues, uh, it, usually, it usually wasn't the reason why they came into the office. Like it was almost like eight, eight times out of 10, uh, it was like some physical complaint. And, you know, after, you know, taking care of the physical complaint and seeing that it wasn't getting any better and asking the right questions, um, I was able to kind of like, you know, you know, dig deeper and say, oh, you know what, this, I think this is actually happening. And I don't think it's, yes, yes, you got some back pain, but I think you got some back pain because of all the stress and the family issues and all the kind of, you know, everything under the sun. Um, But for the majority of the time, they're not, they're not knocking down my door saying, hey, you know, I got some, you know, mental health issues and I need to be taken care of. Exactly. And, you know, a lot of times um, the patients 
clients that I see um, that deal with anxiety, a lot of times they were referred because, you know, they thought they were having a, a heart attack or something like that. So they're like, you know, when you tell them that it's anxiety, they're like, it, it feels that intense in my body. Yes. Yes. It, a panic attack can feel so much so like a heart attack because, you know, the shortness of breath, the, the um, tightening of the chest and things like that. So a lot of times people aren't able to uh, differentiate between the anxiety and a heart attack. Oh yeah, well, that's that's definitely in the money. And now that I'm, especially that I'm in like doing inpatient medicine now, um, I see it even more. Like I see it, I see that stress manifesting in like so many different ways that I didn't see when I was in outpatient office. And I'm seeing patients coming in, you know, shortness of breath and chest pain, a lot of chest pain. Like chest pain is a very big one that you know after we tease down everything and we say, all right, yeah, you know what? This is definitely not your heart. Um, I think this is, you know, your uh, anxiety, I think. And especially I can tell you we're, we're guilty in the, the medical field. We think everything's like anxiety, right? Because mm-hmm. even though and I think anxiety and depression, like they get like the biggest ones, but there's so many aspects of mental health, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That um, I, I, I think we just kind of put everything in those like two holes because we don't really know either you're too hype so we say you're anxious or you know you're too low and we say you're depressed right we don't know uh you know we 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 can't even think about terms of like bipolar we can't think about you know different types of depression um i recently did a a facebook live uh where we talked about uh postpartum depression Mm -hmm. and you know depression you know following you know with chronic diseases and uh uh, depression associated uh with different like times of the month right so you know a lot of hormone type depression right so and it was you know it was you know eye-opening for me i was like oh wow you know like you hear depression uh but it's just like scratching the surface when you just say depression or you just say anxiety especially because i think in the medicine world we don't tend to do enough of the uh cause root like we know what the diagnosis is like we know you may be anxious we know you may be sad we know you may be suffering from grief uh, but we tend not to really try to get to the bottom of it and and I think that's where, you know, the mental health uh, folks come in and kind of help us out because they spend more time trying to get to the bottom of it because, you know, we do in, in our office, you know, we talk, we talk, we talk, we may give some medications, uh, but again, you know, they may be in my office 15, 20 minutes, right? And I, I'm pretty sure you could say that that sometimes is not enough. Exactly. Especially for mental health, uh, 20 minutes, you know, is, is not enough, especially um, when they're seeing you as the physician, because we know that your, your time is, is valuable and you have a long, you know, list of appointments. So what they're, they're wanting more than just that 20 minutes. They want to tell you everything that's going on. Uh, you know, once you get them talking, um, in the 20 minutes, you know, mostly it's just going to be for a med management. And a lot of times, people get the meds and they think that's all that, that they need, but no, you need to see a mental health professional that helps you with the coping skills um, aspect of it because uh, they, again, goes hand in hand. You know, you can take the medicine all you want, but if you're not dealing with what is actually causing the depression, the anxiety, things like that, then, you know, you're not going to, you know, feel any better. So, yep, definitely agree. Definitely agree. So when you when you have, you know, a, a day like World Mental Health Day, um, as as a mental health professional, right? You know, as you know, this is your this is your thing, right? Like, do you see a, a positive from it, or do you see and like what what is like as a, as the professional mental health, like is this a good thing that we we celebrate it? Um, yes, I, I think it's a, a very good thing that you know, it's celebrated because like I was saying it, it shows that you're not alone, you know, that it's okay to talk about it, you know, and we're trying to take the taboo-ness again, I'm, you know, just using my made up word, but using, uh, taking away the taboo-ness away from mental health. You know, it's such a taboo topic. People don't want to um, talk about their mental health issues. They don't want to say that they're seeing a therapist or a psychiatrist or dealing with those issues because they don't want to be deemed as crazy. And we want to get away from that. 
that you're not crazy, that you, you know, you really are dealing with some issues and that you're getting help for those issues. That's, it's just like, you know, hey, you know, I'm going to my doctor to get help with this issue, this medical issue I have. And if it was just as, you know, easy as that, then we wouldn't have to put so much fight into, okay, it's, it's okay. I don't know if that makes sense. Oh yeah, no, no, no definitely. Um, I I think uh, what's, what's even more important, especially when we talk about mental health, is like the terminology, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, again, I think our layman's terminology we we call everything we don't understand or everything what we don't consider "quote unquote" normal crazy, right? Is yeah. is that what what are better terms like? What are what are, like what are better terms that we can use to you know yes acknowledge that there's an issue going on, but not like denigrate them. Yeah. I I think, you know, mental health, you know, we're dealing with my mental health. I'm not crazy. We can, you know, name the actual um, disorder that I have that I'm dealing with, you know, instead of that. And I think people are so quick to, to deem someone as crazy or see it as a taboo subject because we use the term so loosely. Anytime we see somebody um, and they're happy one minute and sad the next, we're quick to deem, oh, you know, she's just bipolar. Oh, you know, she's crazy. You know, my, my crazy cousin Kim, she crazy. She got bipolar. You know, we're, we're just using these terms so loosely that it makes it a bad thing. So people don't then want to get the diagnosis because they see, oh, no, I'm not like your crazy cousin, Kim. Mm. So we have to get away from just using these terms so loosely. Not everybody has bipolar disorder. And there's more to bipolar disorder than I'm happy one minute, sad the next. And and that's why you got to get a professional to tell you that. Exactly. You 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 getting on TV and you reading you reading the wrong blog, and all of a sudden you you're diagnosing yourself with all kinds of uh, different medical problems that you don't even have. Exactly. Exactly. Just like you know, we see kids and they're a little active. You know, we're quick to say oh, ADHD. No, it's not always that. So we have to get away from using these terms so loosely from the average neighbor just diagnosing everybody or your your mom's good friend or your aunt diagnosing you. Go and see somebody. All right. I hear, I hear you. I love it. So again, you know, as you know, as we, we, we wrap up uh, the episode again, we want to uh, reiterate that, you know, as as it being World Mental Health Day, right? We don't want to only think about World Mental Health Day, right? It's it's all about mental health all the time. Yeah. Um, this isn't uh, something that just turns off. Again, World Mental Health Day uh, looks like celebrated on October 10th, right? But we want you to think on October 11th and October 12th, and every single day we want you to be thinking about you know mental health, right? And remember, like it's stigma free, like yeah. that's that's important. And that's what's slowing us down. That's what's, you know, getting us to the point where we're not being taken care of and we're running in circles, uh, you know, not finding uh, the answers we want uh, because of it, right? Yes. Yes, we definitely want to get away from um, the stigmas associated with, you know, mental, mental health disorders. And we also want to get into the practice, into the habit of thinking about our mental health every day. You know, check in with yourself often and see how you're feeling. You know, get a baseline for, for you know, how you're feeling. And if something is not seeming right, talk to a professional, reach out to a professional. You know, it doesn't hurt. It can only help, you know, if you're seeing the right professional. All right, and we're gonna we're gonna end that here. So, Maria, if someone who you knows listening to this podcast and you know they want to reach out and you know you know try to like take care of the mental health and the mental health issues that we've kind of talked about today, or just really understand how to get to the right foot, like how can they get in touch with you? Um, they can check out your show notes, and all my information will be there. And I do have uh, a couple of openings um, for some online therapy. Uh, that's my focus right now, doing online therapy. So I do have a couple slots open. So if they check your show notes, they can get all of my information. 
Uh, of course, the name of my practice is Day by Day Therapeutic Services. Um, so check me out. All right, and that's it. I appreciate uh, you coming on again. Uh, another great episode, episode four zero. And again, if you want uh, her uh, information, I'm putting it everything in the show notes. Um, I'll put a link to the episode that she was on beforehand, which was episode thirty three, where we talked about like death and dying and, and grief and loss from that standpoint. So you guys have a great day, and I'm gonna see you guys next week. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Lunch and Learn with Dr. Barry. I want to say thanks again for all that you guys do and all your support and all of your listens. So I want you to kind of keep on keeping on with going ahead and sharing today's episode. Go ahead and subscribe to the podcast if you're not already subscribed to the podcast. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, all at the same name, Lunch learn pod and uh, go to the website again lunchlearnpod.com for all of the episodes if you've missed one and again i'm at all of the favorite podcast apps google play stitcher soundcloud and of course apple Podcasts, where i would love a five-star review and and tell me what you think about today's episode i would love to hear it so i'll see you guys next week bye